Hey what's up guys, it's Saikur Sam here and I just gotta say I'm actually surprised that I haven't sneezed since I started talking. Like I'm not even kidding, Pollen is actually trying to kill me at this point. I had to take a bath at 4am last night after sleeping for like an hour only. And then I go to bed and sleep for like 3 more hours and wake up at 8am and it's like... Congratulations, you just slept for 4 hours, how does it feel? But now, I'm here with a brand new episode of Unity Basics and in this video specifically, we will be taking a look at the clot system and see how that works. So without further ado, before I start sneezing again, let's begin with this video. <laughs> Alright, so before we begin, I just want to mention quickly that the support on the other two episodes is insanely appreciated, guys. Thank you so much. I'm planning to obviously continue this show since you seem to be enjoying this. And if you still do enjoy your time watching these videos and want to see more, make sure to drop a like on this video so that I know that because it makes it very obvious for me to realize what kind of content you guys like to see. Also, make sure to subscribe so that you stay up to tune for new episodes. And also leave a comment down below suggesting what other features you would like to see us cover on this show. Alrighty, so as you can see here we are in Unity and we have a very basic scene set up here that I actually set up before recording the video. I know, professional, you don't have to say it. <laughs> no, but really, it's just a starting point. Like this doesn't have to, it doesn't have to look like this for you. It's just for eye candy-ish for my video basically. So what we got going on here is basically we have a main camera and we also have a cloth game object which is literally just a plane that I added and rescaled a little bit and then added a, a custom texture to it. So it's nothing way too specific. We are going to add a component to it in just a bit though. So then we have a ground object which is just another plane that I scaled up quite a bit so that we can cover up the ground. We also have a ball which is going to be represented by a sphere and it's going to be used to demonstrate how the cloth physics work when you interact with the cloth itself so it's going to be a cool little demo that we have there and then we finally have a directional light which is going to be just lighting up the scene basically so now we are going to pretty much complete the most important part of this video we are going to add the component cloth to our cloth game object so we're gonna go ahead and click on add component, search for cloth, and then click on enter. Before continuing with anything else, I just want to quickly mention that when you're playing with cloth physics in Unity, you'll often see and hear a term called cloth particle. A particle is basically, in this scenario, one point of the cloth piece. And they are represented by those black dots you're seeing in the video right now. And there are often multiple particles on a mesh which you can edit to in order to add or remove constraints. And it also grants you the ability to manipulate and modify all parts of your cloth mesh just as you wish to. Now back to the main topic, as you can see we have quite a few fields here so let's go through them real quick. Stretching and bending stiffness fields will make your cloth piece more stiff and here you can only set a value of maximum 1 and minimum 0. In order to reduce stretching further you can also use tethers which will prevent moving cloth particles from going too far away from the fixed ones so it will not be stretching as much between those two points basically. And if you want your cloth to make use of gravitational acceleration and force, you can also enable use gravity which will also prevent it from doing this kind of funny thing. On the other side though, if you want to have a wind-like effect on your cloth, you can make use of the external and random accelerations which will allow you to add random or external forces from any side of the cloth. Now to be completely honest with you guys, I don't usually play around with some of the remaining options that we have right here, but so you don't really have to worry about them but I will still let you know when we get into more common settings again and still cover these too. So first and foremost if you want to change how much your character's movement or acceleration affects the cloth vertices basically cloth parts you can change the world velocity and acceleration scale fields. You can also change the friction of the cloth when it's colliding with the character. You also have the option to manipulate the mass of colliding particles by using collision mass scale. Now we are actually back to the more important settings so I suggest you to always have continuous collision turned on since that improves collision stability. It's going to be turned on by default but if you somehow get to it I just suggest you to have it on. So you can also use virtual particles to add one virtual particle per triangle for the mesh in order to improve collision stability as well. 
This is nothing you have to care too much about either if you're new. I have personally never felt the need of to using it, so I don't really use it either, so it's like, no, no. And we also have minor details like solver frequency, which is the number of solver iterations per second. Don't even ask. <laughs> no, but in general, this whole cloth simulation will become more accurate if higher solver frequency value is being used. You can also change the cloth's sleep threshold, and then, most importantly, add and remove capsule and sphere colliders. Speaking of which, cloth does not really react to all colliders in a scene, and nor does it apply forces back to the world. The second part, in more simple words, means that the cloth does not apply any forces to objects that collide with it. So in our example, if the ball ball collides with the cloth, it's not going to apply any forces on the ball itself. We're actually going to talk more about colliders in just a little bit, but first, we'll add some constraints to our current cloth object in our scene, so that it doesn't fall through the ground when we play the game. Constraints basically allow you to set some fixed cloth particles so that your cloth is stiff at some points and still has motion in some other. So if you focus on our cloth here and then press the first button on the cloth component, you can see that we have a brand new working environment inside out of our scene window. And as you can see, we also have a brush, and I'm actually going to reduce the size of this brush to 0.2 so that we have it a little bit smaller like this. And like I said before in the video, so all of these black dots you can see on the screen right now are basically particles. And these particles allow us to control exactly where we want the cloth to be stiff and also be motionful. And in order to edit between or kind of like decide between if it's going to be motion or not, we can actually change the max distance of painting from 0 to 1. 0 is going to make the black dot turn red, which basically means that it's going to be stiff. Meanwhile, 1 is going to be green, and it's going to turn the dots to become green, and it means motion. And by default, the black dots mean motion as well, so in case you add your cloth to the scene and play the game, you'll realize that it falls through the ground right off the bat, even if you don't really add any motion to the cloth itself. As long as it has gravity, obviously. <laughs> if you wish to, you also have the option to select cloth particles by clicking on select and selecting them individually. Something I always do for getting more realism into my cloth is I also increase the bending stiffness to be 1 from the default value which is 0. I also make sure stretching stiffness is at 1 as well, using tethers is activated and also gravity is activated. And like I said before, cloth does not react to all colliders in scene per automatic, so if we're just going to bounce back a little bit, this means that you have to define which colliders you want your cloth to react to manually, such as a player, another game object you have in mind, and so on. You can add and remove colliders easily by using these two fields at the bottom, pretty much at the bottom, except for the virtual particle weights. So capsule colliders and sphere colliders. You can easily add and remove colliders by basically increasing the size value to 1, and then you have a new, brand new field that pops up here where you can basically attach a capsule. Now, we do not have a capsule in our scene, but we have a ball, which is a sphere collider, so we are going to increase the size of sphere colliders to be 1. And then we can basically attach our ball here, and if you wish to, you can also attach it to second. And then you can play the game, and you'll see that if you move the ball into the cloth itself, it is going to react just like a cloth would. As you can see, what happens here is that if we throw the cloth a little bit forward, forward then it starts clipping as soon as it gets through to the ball itself because the collision is exactly at the edge of the mesh itself for the ball. What I usually do for a workaround here is I increase the radius of the ball collision, or the sphere collider rather, to be 0.6 instead of 0.5. And that way I prevent it from clipping all the time every time I throw the cloth up, on, up into the air a little bit, as you can see there. It's a very simple workaround that I have. Obviously, this was just a rough example of what you can actually do with the cloth system in Unity and how you use it initially. There are multiple different ways you can approach this system, and I even made an example where I downloaded a free character from the S store, which is going to be linked in the description, and applied cloth physics to his... Uh, well, cloth. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to call it. Like, I was about to say robe, but that's not a robe, is it? And that is pretty much it for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed this brand new tutorial for beginners in Unity. If you would like to see more of these videos and more of these episodes, make sure to drop a like on this video. It's all the thumbs ups are super, super appreciated. And it makes it very obvious for me to realize what kind of content you guys like to see. And also, obviously, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you stay up to tune for new content and do not miss out on new videos that we upload. And also, let us know 
know in the comment section which features you would like me to cover in the future episodes because first and foremost I'm very active in the comment section so you are going to get a reply guaranteed okay and I'm also planning to interact with you guys more uh, as far as you know c like including your comments actually in the video so that I feature them and um, I want to bring our interaction game up a level even more now that we are growing in the community and w with the channel and stuff so I want to make sure I do not lose this interaction value that I've always prioritized with you guys before ending the video I also want to give a huge shout out to all of our patrons including Richard Stance, Cupola, Tromber MCP, Matt Clafoot and G.I. Jojo for all of their support in April for this channel it was super appreciated it's still super appreciated and everybody else obviously supporting the content and the videos I, I really do appreciate everything you guys do for me and these videos keep on get, becoming better and better because of you guys and thanks to you now with that being said guys once again thank you so much for watching hope you all enjoyed your times I'm going to catch you guys in the comment section and also in the discord server hopefully if my pollen doesn't really strike me again so hold your thumbs as we Swedes usually say if you didn't know that I'm going to describe that but basically that means wish me luck so I'll catch you guys there see you guys peace out enjoy your nights